Welcome to this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside, the podcast giving you advice, tips and tools for getting the most out of your research. I'm Adam Pawson, and today I'll be talking to you about cell lysis methods. We all need to lyse cells to extract our samples from them. There are many cell lysis methods. Some are harsh, while some are gentle. Some are laborious, while some are easy. Some require dedicated equipment, while some do not. So which one do you choose? The best choice is probably the one that requires the least amount of work that doesn't harm your sample. With that in mind, here's a brief insight into eight cell lysis methods for your experiments. Cell lysis methods fall into two classes, mechanical methods and non-mechanical methods. Since non-mechanical methods involve adding chemicals or enzymes to the cells, it's fairly clear which class each lysis method belongs to. The advantage of mechanical methods is that they are direct and you have control over them. However, some mechanical methods are harsh and may denature your sample if not performed diligently. The advantage of non-mechanical methods is that chemicals or enzymes lyse the cells for you, but you may have to remove these later to prevent them from interfering with your experiments. So let's get to it. Number one, the mortar and pestle. This method involves giving the cells a good old grinding. Note that the cells do not have to be suspended in anything for this method to work. This cell lysis method is often used for plant samples frozen in liquid nitrogen since the specimens are comparatively bulky. Also, when you lyse the cells, metabolites and samples may be extracted by adding solvents. And you don't need any specialist kit, just the mortar and pestle. Number two, bead beating. Glass or ceramic beads can crack open cells. It might not sound like it, but this kind of mechanical shear is gentle enough to keep organelles intact. It can be used for all kinds of cells, just to add beads to a suitable amount of cell suspension and vortex. Alternatively, slightly more exotic equipment, such as bead mills, can standardize your cell lysis. So think about what will work for you. Number three, sonication. This is perhaps the most common cell lysis method, and most readers will be familiar with it. Ultrasonic homogenizers, usually just called sonicators, work by inducing rapid vibrations in a titanium probe immersed in the cell solution. This causes cavitation, a process in which tiny bubbles are produced within the cell suspension. When these bubbles explode, a local shock wave disrupts the cell wall, just like an explosion disrupts things in the blast radius, only the medium is liquid, not air. This method is very popular for plant and fungal cells and is the method of choice for protein purification. While sonication is automated, you just set the timer and go, it has several disadvantages. It generates a lot of heat, and you must be careful to avoid heating your sample. For this reason, sonication is usually done on ice and in pulses. This method is also extremely loud, so the process is usually done in a soundproof cabinet or with ear defenders. Sonication is also notorious for creating aerosols, tiny droplets that waft through the air and that you can breathe in, so don't sonicate any infectious material. And all you need is a sonicator. The good news is that they are really common and have interchangeable tips to suit different sample sizes. Number four, homogenization. Homogenizers use shearing forces to lyse cells, similar to the bead beating method. Homogenization can be performed by squeezing cells through a tube that is slightly smaller than the cell dimensions, thereby shearing away the outer layer, for example using a French press, or by using a rotating blade to lyse the cells, just like a kitchen blender for example, the rotostrator. Both are comparatively gentle, and people who purify membrane proteins prefer the French press cell lysis method. Plus, French presses can break the rock-hard plasma membrane. But French presses are relatively cumbersome, requiring greasing, maintenance, and can clog easily. Rotostrators, on the other hand, are quick and efficient, but you can usually only process a few tens of microliters of cells at once. Plus, French presses and rotor blazers may cost a few thousand dollars. If you lie cells using these bits of kit, be aware of cross-contamination and note that you can add enzymes such as lysozyme to help the process. Number five, freeze-thaw lysis. This one's as simple as it sounds. The freeze-thaw cell lysis method creates ice crystals, remember water expands when it freezes, that melt when the sample is thawed. Several freeze-thaw cycles ultimately rupture the cells. It's comparatively gentle and, by definition, doesn't generate any heat, but it's time-consuming. You can speed things up by using liquid nitrogen, but even so, it will take a while. Number six, high-temperature lysis. 
High temperatures and pressures break the chemical bonds within cell walls, but also denature proteins. So it's a quick and dirty cell lysis method. You can use a microwave or autoclave to generate the heat and pressure. But it goes without saying that you should avoid this method if your sample is denatured by heat. Number 7. Enzymatic lysis. There are enzymes that can destroy the cell wall for you. The enzymatic cell lysis method breaks open cells by using enzymes that degrade cell walls and membranes. Simply incubate a suspension of your cells with the appropriate enzyme or combination of enzymes which digest cell wall components. Depending on what organism you work with, you can use cellulases, chitinase, bacteriolytic enzymes like lysozyme which destroys peptidoglycans, mananases or glyconase, etc. This method is also great if you want to isolate protoplasts, a cell without the cell wall. It's really quite gentle, meaning you don't have to worry about denaturing your sample, but you might have to remove or destroy the enzymes later on. Number 8. Chemical lysis. Organic solvents like alcohols, ether or chloroform can disrupt the cell wall by permeabilizing cell walls and membranes. This method is especially handy if you want to extract hydrophobic molecules like plant pick because you can pick a solvent that will extract them. You can combine this method with one that uses shearing forces to maximize the fraction of cells lysed. And note also you can use EDTA specifically to disrupt the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria, whose cell walls contain lipopolysaccharides that are stabilized by cations like magnesium and calcium. EDTA will chelate the cations, leaving holes in the cell walls, and you can dialyze the EDTA away later. So that's it for a brief insight into 8 cell lysis methods. Check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.